Get ready? No center! No peace! 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 It really happened like just out of nowhere. On October 20th, in the middle of the night, four in the morning or so, the CUNY security, they shut down all of uh, City College and they took the Guillermo Morales Asada Shakur Center. By taking, I mean they literally raided the place and seized it of its contents. Yes, I have my personal possessions inside. Can I get my personal possessions? Tomorrow. No, I need them now. Tomorrow. I, my personal possessions. Are you leaving? If not, you're under arrest. My personal possessions. If you're not, you're under arrest. My personal possessions. You're under arrest. Okay, okay. May I get my personal possessions? May I get you're my under arrest. Yeah. May I get It was illegally taken by the college administration during a time where we were supposed to have 24-hour library. It was midterms week, and it was something my group fought for, Students for Educational Rights. Immediately after the shutdown of the Morales Shakur Community and Student Center, students of CCNY and other community members held peaceful protests, rallies, and other events in support of getting the center back, which was known as the only liberated space in CUNY. The Morales Shakur Center, it, it won several services for the students, including 24-7 library hours, during exams, finals, and midterms and stuff, uh, gender-neutral bathrooms. The space, it, it was really one through struggle. So a lot of activity has been going on in that space for the last 20 years, 20-some uh, odd years. It was founded in February 14 of 1990. So ever since then, until now, it's been it, it, a lot of student groups and community groups have used that space to provide these services to really help and empower our communities. Public safety of CCNY and the NYPD have taken action by taking down signs, stopping protests, and even arresting students. Two protesters were pepper sprayed and arrested after trying to get into the newly extended career center. There's certain procedures to be taken when things happen, and those procedures weren't taken. And this is what's causing this mass mobilization. Anytime you take away a student space, transform it without communication, you're gonna see mass student mobilization. The reasoning for it, according to the administration, is that they needed to expand their careers and professional development center, which they already had one on campus. And they decided to go into the Morales Shakur and expand it into that. So now the administration is saying that, oh, we took your center with all its services it provided and we'll set up a new center called the Urban Center. This Urban Center lacks one crucial ingredient and that is the fact that students and community members own that room. You know, they own these programs for over 20 years and they were doing it successfully. Um, so I've been uh, on the front lines basically trying to get students in the community involved and to make them realize that this is an attack on them because this is an attack on their right to freedom of expression, their right to self-determination, self um, and this is an attack on all, all of the activism that was going on inside that center that was benefiting the community. A lot of students, they have been facing the backlash of, the, of security, uh, even the police on campus and off campus. Six CUNY students were arrested during a protest to end the teaching gig at CUNY of David Petraeus, former CIA chief and ex-general. Protesters were chanting, War Criminal Petraeus out of CUNY now. War Criminal Petraeus out of CUNY now! War Criminal Petraeus out of CUNY now! Over 50 people were marching in the streets when a so-called fight with police broke out. When the NYPD took control, students were hit, shoved, and thrown onto the ground. The next court date for the CUNY 6 is set for a late February 2014. CUNY has exhibited this, this militarization, this increase in policing and security, security aggression, for a couple years now. I mean, it's, it's a trend. So basically, I can say that the moment that students, working students of color specifically, or for the majority, kick the doors of CUNY open, they, the administration, has been trying to close that door and kick people of color, working people of color, out of CUNY.
This space has so much history. I mean, it's a, it's a living testament of our collective people power. It's a history of resistance, and it, it really is a legacy of our dignity and liberation. The center got its name, William Morales. They called him Guillermo because there were a lot of Latinos in, the, in CUNY. So Guillermo Morales and Asada Shakur are the two alumni of City College. And these two, they, uh, after they graduated, they continued the legacy of organizing and defending their communities. Now, Asada Shakur, she's been labeled as a terrorist and on the FBI wanted list. Uh, so it's been getting a lot of heat for that. And for over many years that the center has been around, the administration has tried to, and they have taken the name of the center because of that. Guillermo Morales, uh, you know, the United States, they had been placing a lot of bombs and bombing a lot of the businesses and homes of nationalists, nationalist Puerto Ricans on the island. So, of course, he's going to do what he has to do to defend his people and his community. The community is, is the backbone of, of the students at this campus. So people who go to the school come from a community and most of the people, and this, this school is in the middle of Harlem. People have to remember that this school is in the middle of Harlem. Harlem is a historically underrepresented community, right? And people from this community have been oppressed for a very long time. And they've been shut out from schools like City College, right in the middle of their neighborhood. So we have to make that connection. We owe it to the community of Harlem for even having us people of color, working class people come to the school. I started Food Not Bombs Harlem, which Food Not Bombs is a larger organization. They have thousands of chapters all over the world. So what we do is take what would have been food waste, donations from restaurants and cafes, and we serve it to the public every week. It was kind of born out of the Shakur Center because there was the Corbin Hill Farm Food Chair, right? So they tried to bring healthy, affordable food to the Harlem community through the Shakur Center because it's also a community center, right? So it's like the last liberated, was the last liberated space in all of CUNY. Um, so we would get the excess food from the Corbin Hill Farm Food Chair and then they took the center. So then we kind of had to find alternate, alternate donors. There's 20 organizations that came out of the center. The student groups recently met. There were many kind of like different collectives organizing around this, so we're trying to unify right now. We're trying to figure out like, you know, how we can work together to get this back because, you know, there's so many students affected by this, so many community members affected by this. We need the community and the students to come out. Without the students, without the city college students, without the CUNY students, without the community people to, on this struggle, we're not gonna get the center back. You can forget about the center if you don't have students and community involved. On Saturday, December 14th, from 5 to 10 p.m., student organizers put together a benefit concert and open mic for the Morales Shakur Community and Student Center. All those who weathered the snowstorm came to show support and enjoy a night of spoken word, raffles, and performances. When you see me crying at our graduation ceremony, I will pretend that you understand. So when you post new photos from your five-star restaurants and fancy apartment views that I am not there, I will pretend you understand. So when you refuse to see me, like Bloomberg and Condoleezza and all the other bullies you wanted to become in middle school, like Hennessy and Blair and all the other white men who designed your curriculum, I mean this empire and disguised it as an education, we, we will be outside burning our degrees to stay warm. But we, we will finally be happy without you. I just came to show my support for the Shakur Center, the Morales Shakur right, Center. I think they've, everyone in the organization has been doing great work keeping you know, these ideas alive. The culture in the city's kind of started to change. People started to forget about these things. But, you know, everyone in the Morales Shakur Center is like dedicated to keeping it alive. And, you know, they obviously had no reason to take it away. You know what I mean? So it's pretty crazy. It's pretty kind of one of the most obvious acts of, you know, oppression or something like that that you'll find in the city. This is an attack by the white supremacist, racist, patriarchal, imperialist, ruling class that controls this country, that stops and frisks our people, that kills our people abroad, on oppressed people internally within the borders of the U.S. The borders that are a prison house of oppressed people and exploited people. 
So the Morales Shakur Center, it's always stood as a beacon of hope where we go and we organize against our oppression, against our exploitation. And they want to take that away from us. It's the last vestige of a time when CUNY used to be more controlled by the people and was closer to being seized for the people altogether. And they want to take that hope away from us. But as we've shown them throughout the semester, we're not going to go down without a fight. All power to the people! 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 All power to the people. Sisters and brothers that said struggle will continue. We are not going to give up. We are going to continue to do this all through the holidays. President Lisa, can't you see? President Lisa, Lisa can't, can't you see? see? How your greed is hurting me. How your greed is hurting me. Undemocratic policies. Undemocratic policies. NYPD beating me. NYPD beating me. They need to be scared of us. They need to be scared. Because when the people start organizing, when we start organizing our community and mobilizing the press to people, that's when they know that their reign of terror is over. And our reign of true democracy, true freedom, and our liberation, it's on its way. That's what they're afraid of. And that's why they're trying to take away the center. That's why they're expelling, suspending, arresting people. And we're not going to stop. This is still in the community's hearts, in the students' hearts, in the students' minds, and we're not going to stop protesting until we get it back. This fight, it's going to need everybody. It's going to need many people to come together. And, you know, through that unity comes our strength and our power. We can protect each other, and we can continue to move forward. We need you all to come out and participate in our future actions and our future events and get involved in this movement because we're not going to move without you. This is our center. Let me hear you say stand up. Remember, this is our center. Stand up.